All right, number six of 2018. This is our last problem um, in type six, differential equations. So by the end of this, you should have a very good feel of solving differential equations, dealing with slope fields, and tangent lines, and, and the rest. Um, I think this problem is a pretty straightforward problem. Make sure you've done it before you watch this video. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. Number six says consider the differential equation, dy dx, uh, a slope field for part A, it says a slope field for the given differential equation is shown below. So how nice, they gave us a slope field. We don't have to actually write it out. We don't have to trace it out. Or we don't have to put the little notches. But in this case, it says sketch the solution curve that passes through the points 0, 2 and the solution curve that passes through the points 1, 0. So we're just kind of sketching a curve that is going to pass through this point um, and follow the slope field. So 0, 2 is this point right here, and we need to graph a curve that follows the slope field around it. So you can see that the next uh, point over has a horizontal line, horizontal line, horizontal line, and then going back, horizontal line. So this one's pretty easy. It's just a straight horizontal line. For the second one, it says sketch another solution curve that passes through 1, 0. So here is 1, 0. This one's a little bit a uh, little bit more difficult. If I follow the solution curve, it looks like these guys are going up and then they're kind of flattening out. So we're going to draw that side. And then on this side, let me take a step back here. And on this side, uh, it looks like they're going down and then they're kind of flattening out and then coming back up again. So it should look something like that. So that's a pretty straightforward one. Um, on the points, you're going to get one point for the solution curve for 0, 0,2 and then one point for the solution curve for uh, 1, 0. So one point for basically for this line, one point for this curve. The, the uh, grading rubric was very specific though. It said that you do not get the points unless, unless your curve passes through the point indicated and it continues all the way through the entire field. So in other words, it must pass through the entire given um, coordinate plane in, in, in a sense. So if you just stopped, if you just focused on maybe this part and you didn't focus on the part behind it, you wouldn't have gotten that point for that. So be careful, you have to extend your, your solution curve all the way through. All right, for part B, it says let y equal f of x be a particular solution to the given differential equation with the initial condition of 1 equals or sorry, f of 1 equals 0, write the equation of the line tangent to the graph of y equals f of x at x equals 1. So I can see some students doing this. They see this, oh, particular solution. I'm going to solve for y. Well, that's going to be somewhere in this problem, but it's not here. You've got to read the prompt. It says write the equation for the tangent line. So remember how to do a tangent line. We need a point and a slope. Well, we know the point is 1, 0, right? We need the slope. And remember, the differential equation is the slope. This is another way of saying y prime. So we just need to plug in um, our coordinate, x equals 1, and therefore y equals 0, into our differential equation to get our slope. So that's going to say 1 third times 1. And then we need the y value. The y value when x equals 1 is 0. So that's going to say 0 minus 2 squared. And then that simplifies to 1 third times 4, or 4 thirds. So that is my slope. Now my tangent line is going to be y minus 0 equals 4 thirds times x minus 1. That's pretty straightforward. That's my equation for my tangent line. Then it says use the equation to approximate f of 0.7. So just like the past, I like uh, making this a linearization. You don't necessarily need to. You could have just plugged in 0.7 to x and solve for y but I just like uh, getting y by itself and calling it L of x. So we're going to plug in 0.7 now. We're going to evaluate that um, tangent line at that point, and so we end up with negative 0.4. The key to this is not to leave it here. Yeah, the tangent line's value is negative 0.4, but what is f of 0.7? f of 0.7 is approximately negative 0.4, so that's important. As far as points go here, you're going to get one point for the tangent line equation, so one point for this guy and then you're going to get one point for your approximation of f of 0.7, so one point for that guy. All right, for part C, 
It says find the particular solution y equals f of x to the given differential equation. So this is where we're going to solve the differential equation because it says find the solution, find the particular solution. Part B says find the tangent line. So be careful when you read this. Uh, in order to solve this, we need to separate the variables. So we're going to isolate uh, the y's on one side, the x's on the other. So multiply by dx. And then we're going to divide by y minus 2 squared. So we end up with 1 over y minus 2 squared dy equals 1 third x dx. From here we'll integrate. And then we're going to say the antiderivative of that is going to be natural log of the absolute value of y minus 2 squared. Oh, wait, that's not true. Why isn't that true? Because the exponent isn't 1. I've said that over and over and over again, right? So be careful with this. Because the exponent in the denominator is not 1, we have to rewrite this as a negative exponent, okay? And then take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of this is uh, y minus 2 to the negative 1, and then the negative out front. Again, take the derivative of that to make sure it matches the integrand. The antiderivative of 1 third x is going to be 1 over 6 x squared. Again, take the antiderivative, or sorry, take the derivative to make sure it matches the integrand. And then we have to put our plus c. If we don't put plus c, then our points stop here. We got to put the plus c. And then we're going to plug in our initial condition here. So we're going to plug in 0 for y, and we're going to plug in 1 for x. I just rewrote this as um, a positive exponent by moving that down. But now plugging in the initial condition. And then solving for c, so we get 1 half equals 1 sixth plus c. Get a common denominator there, so that would be 3 six, And then subtract the 1 six, you get 2 six, So that turns into 1 third, so c is 1 third. And then we're going to take that and plug it back into uh, our solution that we got here. And then we're going to isolate y. So remember when you're isolating y here, if you have a fraction on this side, you have to get a singular fraction over here, so we're going to get a common denominator first, and then we're going to add these up. So the common denominator would be 6, so that would say 2 sixths, and so that would say x squared plus 2 all over 6. We can then flip both sides, so we end up with y minus 2 over negative 1 equals 6 over x squared plus 2. And then we'll multiply both sides by negative 1, and then we'll add 2 uh, to get our y value. And so we would say that is our final answer. If your answer is different than that, as long as it's equivalent to this and you have y by itself, that is okay. I can't go through every single scenario that might match this, but if, you're, if your solution is algebraically equivalent to this and you have isolated y, that is correct. Um, as long as you got all the components there, you got your c value and everything else. Points on this guy, you should be able to guess it by now. You get one point for separating the variables correctly, so one point for this line. You're going to get uh, two points for your antiderivatives. Um, so you're going to get one point for the antiderivative on the left, one point for the antiderivative on the right. You're going to get one point for putting plus c and finding c. So if you didn't put plus c, you don't get that point, and you don't get any other points beyond that point. Uh, and then if you get the, you have to have the c value as well. And then you're going to get one point for your final answer, so one point for isolating y. All right, that wraps up differential equations. Grade the last two FRQs and input your scores into Socrative. The next set of problems is the last type, type 7, and that is dealing with area and volume. And I will talk to you later.